hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com the exciting place to be if you like being bored so yeah uh, my name is Jason Newland this is let me bore you to sleep number 86 and I only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes or or and only watch this video on YouTube when you can safely close your eyes and please remember to subscribe please and like and share and comment and it would be nice actually if you want to share if you're listening on Facebook maybe you can share to your page and let other people go through the same having to listen to me the same way that you do you don't have to listen to me it's a choice but this is uh, purposely boring just in case you decide to write a letter or send a, a comment post a comment saying this is boring which I do get occasionally it's, it's supposed to be so I never really know if that's a compliment or a, or otherwise I'm really never really sure it's hard to tell with writing you know so yesterday I did number 85 in my let me bore you to sleep recordings and I uploaded it to Spreaker so this is the process that I do so I record it on my iPhone using the Spreaker app I then upload it to Spreaker I then download it or I change the title to you know whatever title it is with the date then I download the audio to my laptop then I open the audio with I, oh yeah I normally save the recording for example this will be number 86 let me boy to sleep 30th or it might be the 29th uh, of January 2019 so that will be the title uh, kind of I suppose my name will be in there somewhere as well so I download that, but at the end of the of the the title, I put the words unedited, so that I know that it is uh, unedited. So when I'll open Audacity, I do actually have, uh, I say professional, but you know, a uh, pro audio editing software but I just find audacity works better for some reason uh, plus I know how to use audacity I've been using it for a long long time over 10 years so the only reason I use audacity is because uh, nowadays I like to just trim the beginning and trim the end you know uh, as far as because I always leave a gap before I start talking and I always leave a gap 
after I finished talking at the end, um, the started talking bit is at the beginning, because it just it's, it's nice to have that little bit of a gap, so that I can cut off a little bit at the beginning and fade in using the effects of Audacity and at the end I can cut off a bit and then fade out using the effects of Audacity uh, editing software yesterday I did a big sneeze during the recording so uh, luckily because the way uh, I did look at the the clock when I did the big sneeze so that I knew roughly when it was that I did the big sneeze uh, it should be a title of a film shouldn't it the big sneeze so the What was I talking about? Yeah, so I, I I opened the software, so I looked at the recording, and it's very kind of wavy, like up and down, up and down, the actual recording. And uh, the part where I sneeze is very obvious that something's just happened there in the recording, so, because there's a lot of... Uh, spiky activity and there's no like little writing sneeze was here that would be you know makes make it easier but I listened to the part where I sneezed and what I did at the time is I left about 20 seconds after the sneeze before I started talking and carried on talking which meant I could just and also there was a little gap between talking and, st and when I sneezed because I knew it was going to happen so well I felt it was going to happen I was pretty certain it was going to happen I suppose with the build up I was probably 3 out of 10 sure that I was about to sneeze but I wasn't sure you know because sometimes you, sometimes a sneeze can come and go can't it and it's just it's just the pepper that you were sniffing or you know that it's it, it could just you know it could be anything it could be the sawdust from the um, bench park bench that you're cutting up because you like it and you think oh I'll take that home that would look nice in my bathroom it, you know, it could be anything anything that's sort of irritating the nostril passages and uh, I don't know when I said that I just had a little image of a a barge you know like in Venice just travelling through the nostrils a strange image and then as I got closer to the actual sneeze itself the likelihood increased somewhat and I'm not really a betting man or a betting woman but it felt like a, a dead cert you know it felt like it was going to happen and the closer I got to it I must say that I don't mean there was a big sneeze standing near the window and I'm kind of creeping up on it you know it, it's just I <laughs> the sneeze was looking out the window Enjoying the glory of the tree with the birds, listening to the faint sounds of trains, 
and wondering what that f unusual aroma is that was lingering in the bedroom. So no, I wasn't. That wasn't a situation. Yet. I just as it got closer to me to sneeze, I thought, right, I'll stop talking. And I'll wait until I've sneezed before I continue with the recording. Well, I'm still recording, but until I, you know, because it's nice to have that gap. It's like a little bridge that you can, you know, remove the sound without the recording really noticing. And once I removed it, I listened to it, and you wouldn't even know that the sneeze ever existed. It's like a little ghost sneeze. So, you know, it's like, like a little ghost fart. You know, the ones that you fart, and you think something is bubbling up, and you think it's going to potentially destroy the, the dinner party that you're having and hosting. And then on if nothing happens, you feel like a little bit of air, but that's it. And nobody's nostrils are affected. Nobody runs out of the room. Nobody laughs. Nobody starts moaning about how you sport the christening. It's like a little ghost, you know, like it just it's as if it didn't exist. It's like, phew. So, I want to listen back to the recording, just that bit, not the whole of the recording, because I couldn't, I couldn't listen back to a whole recording. With the best will in the world, I, I couldn't. You know, it's, it's so boring. <laughs> it's, I just wouldn't want to listen to it. I wouldn't want to listen to myself. It's yeah. It's not. It wouldn't. It's not the top of my list of things to do. Listening to myself talking. So I, I, I recorded the recording. Took out the sneeze it sounded very fluent when I took it out as if it hadn't occurred and that's the strange thing about it is because anyone listening to that recording will never have known that there was a sneeze there and that's a little bit deceptive But at the same time, if I had left it there, it was very loud. It was proper full blast sneeze. It was, it's a bit like one of those exaggerated public sneezes that people do. You know, if, you know, I don't know what's going through people's minds when they do that, but I can only imagine that you know, they're sitting in a restaurant and they're thinking, well, I'm going to have to sneeze, it's coming on, I might as well give it all I've got, I might as well just go to town with this sneeze, I might as well make it the, the best sneeze I've ever made, and they become, it's like they've got some kind of Olympic trainer inside their mind saying, come on, you can do it. You've trained for years for this, your whole life. 
but this one sneeze come on you can win gold you can do it make this sneeze count no one else can sneeze the way you can you'll be able to live off this gold record this gold this this sneeze will keep you going for years you'll be able to tell people the story of the sneeze you'll be able to go on chat shows and no one will ever ask you to sneeze for them because they'll know they'll know that no other sneeze will ever come close to this it's a once in a lifetime perfect sneeze so I finished the recording edited it and no idea what I was talking about and I then download that recording as just the number 85 let me bore you to sleep dash Jason Newland and then in brackets the date which was the yesterday was the 28th of January 2019 but I didn't put edited I just left it as normal just without anything and then I went back to Spreaker and I clicked on the replace audio button to replace the audio the original recording and then I went to my files and I clicked on the edited but the edited recording and deleted that and then I double clicked on the new recording and that uploaded to the Spreaker podcast session and then what did I do then yeah so that's that done oh yeah then I go and I share it onto SoundCloud then yeah then I can share it onto Facebook uh, as listen on Spreaker so at this point I swap over to a different laptop because I've got two I've got an old laptop that keeps burning out and shutting down so I use that for basic stuff but I can't rely on it and I've got another one which I use for the editing so the, and I swap over back to the old because I've used the, the editing um, laptop for the audio gone back to the old laptop the one that buzzes really loudly and it's just really just it just overheats and switches itself off continuously but uh, so I've had to sort of adapt a bit the thing is with laptops, even I mean, it's, it's got a low. It's a low-end laptop that I've got, both of them. 
but the cameras are just really bad. The cameras are just awful. It's even now you'd think with the technology, you know, on phones, uh, that the cameras would be like half decent, but they're really not. They're just like as grainy and farty as they ever were. Like 10 years ago, 12, 13 years ago, the, the webcam, inbuilt webcam on laptops, well, the, the level that I buy them are just pretty awful. So I don't know what the camera's like on a, like an Apple book or Apple book pro or something. I think the camera is a lot better on there. In fact, I know it is because I, I know someone that's got one and they've filmed themselves and it's a lot, a lot better quality. I don't know if it's as good as the iPhone but I imagine it's sort of similar as it's the same, I imagine it would be the same software, the same hardware, but I may be wrong. So the next thing I do is I share the Spreaker recording onto Facebook so I put down uh, listen on Spreaker and then the title so I post it on my Facebook normal page and I post it on my Facebook page page which is the like a fan page thing then I share it on Twitter and somewhere else there's only one other place it gets shared like uh, that it allows me to share it from the actual website and then SoundCloud that I've already done so when that's done I then go over to SoundCloud and hopefully by now it's processed and it's up and running so I go into edit in SoundCloud podcast, I make it available to download. What else do I do? Oh yeah, I add it to a playlist. So in this case, it was 85, number 85, Let Me Boy to Sleep. So I added it to my let me bore you to sleep playlist on SoundCloud and sp up to that point I had 84 recordings but once I added the 85th uh, I then had 85 uh, on the playlist for the let me bore you to sleep uh, sessions And then what I do is I share the SoundCloud recordings, uh, recording rather. So I do exactly pretty much what I did on Spreaker, but there's more to choose from. So I share it to Facebook quite often first. So I put listen on SoundCloud and then the, the title and I do that on my normal page and on the fan page uh, I share it on Twitter and possibly Google Plus and a couple of others And then that's it at that point. So what I do is I then open up my website.
and I add the details of this new recording. So I do it's like a new a new item. So I, you know I basically copy the previous page. So I put in uh, 84 let me bore you to sleep. That page comes up from the day before. I click duplicate and then I change the title to 85, change the date to 28 for whatever it was yesterday and then save that. Then I go into because on that page there'd be a video and an audio. There'd be a SoundCloud audio player and a YouTube video player playing the recordings, you know, the, the video and the audio from number 84, Let Me Bore You To Sleep. So I would delete that. I'd go back to SoundCloud, which is still open share button allows me to click on the embed so I would uh, copy and paste the embed code and then paste that into the page on my website so that the SoundCloud player play is in there I check that it's all in fine press save and then what I do is I upload a file the actual audio file uh, in this case number 85 let me bore you to sleep so I upload it the audio file the finished one to the website server which takes a few seconds maybe 10, 15, 20 seconds depending on the size of the audio I mean, generally the, the audio doesn't go over 100 megabytes And once it's uploaded, it says complete. And then I just leave it as it is. I then go back to the other laptop and I start and I open up the software for the, the video software, the video editing software rather. And I get the video together for, so I've got three templates that I've built. And they're on the, uh, what do you call it? On the desktop of the laptop. So one is for let me bore you to sleep. The other one is, that's a template. Uh, the other template video is deep sleep whisper hypnosis. And the other deep, the other template is uh, just a standard one for whatever. But that only lasts about 22 minutes. The other ones last for about over an hour each. I think one's the Let Me Boy to Sleep one lasts about an hour and 20 minutes or an hour and 19. But I, I never generally go over an hour with these. And the Deep Sleep Whisper video is a, again about an hour, but I generally don't go much over 20 minutes with those ones. So with the Let Me Boy to Sleep that's the template that I clicked on and that opened up and I 
posted or pasted that into the story line part of the video uh, it's like a I think it's a story book or whatever they call it so basically just the video section it goes in there I then click on uploading the 80 number 85 let me bore you to sleep mp3 so I upload that and I, I add that to the video so that's in a different section that's the audio section and then I think with the let me bore you to sleep about 18 seconds in is where the audio starts where I'm talking and so I move the audio to that point because before no let me boil to sleep it's not it's I'm thinking of the other thing the let me boil to sleep starts straight away the audio but with the video about three seconds in I add a, a number to the left hand side of the screen of the video so for example yesterday it was the number 85 so I put 85 in and I make that make sure that's exactly the same length as the audio it finishes at the audio and I make sure that the video length is the same length as the audio so all kind of starts and ends correctly what I have been doing is changing the the color of the numbers so it's not just always the same number you know I like to play around and bring a bit of creativity <laughs> into my numbers so that's what I've been doing and once that's done I then listen to the beginning make sure it sounds okay and then I skip to the end and listen to the last bit to make sure that sounds okay and the video works fine and then I save it it's called rendering but I uh, basically it just renders it and produces it and it takes sometimes a, a few hours for a long recording a long video so I just put that video I can't use that laptop really while I'm uh, rendering and editing because all the power of the laptops going into that project so I get the old uh, helicopter sounding laptop out and I can do you know, other stuff while the other thing is working after a few hours when it's actually completed I will upload it to YouTube and because the file size is about 5 gigabytes for an hour it takes quite a while to upload to YouTube it's uh, a f bit of a process you know And then when it's uploaded to YouTube, I also, as I upload it, I copy and paste the correct title because it doesn't go into the YouTube title the way that it's originally was. So I change the title to make it nice, correct. And then 
I add it to a, a like a playlist, which would be let me bore you to sleep. And then in the editing part, I also change or put in a date, which would have been yesterday. And then I just leave it. If it's at least 1%, um, uploaded, I will just click the save button or the, what is it? What's the button called? Is it save or is it, it's not upload because it's already uploaded. Processed. I don't know, but it's, it's, it basically just means that once it's uploaded, it will automatically process and become public. The thing is, yesterday's video for the Let Me Bore You to Sleep number 85, this is number 86. So it, the audio was fine, uploaded that to you know, Facebook, uploaded it to Spreaker, SoundCloud, shared it on the podcasts, had, you know, people downloading it and playing it and everything like that. But the video, although it, it uh, edited fine and it was all complete, I... I'm really boring myself with this story. I uploaded the video to YouTube three times and all three times it didn't work. And last night, you know, a good 10 hours ago, it was at 95% processed. And I went on earlier just with my phone and it's still not showing up so I don't know what on earth's gone on I might have to redo it re remake the video or something I don't know what's happened I've never had that happen before it wasn't a long video if anything it was a little bit shorter than some of the others sometimes I'll go over an hour sometimes an hour and five I've even gone an hour and ten minutes but I think this one was about 55 minutes so technically it's a little bit shorter than normal although 55 minutes is still a a nice girthy experience it's still a nice length, isn't it? Rather than girth, actually, length. But I I don't know, really, if uh, maybe the file got corrupted or I, I did something different that I didn't realise I'd done because I suppose if I realised I'd done it, I would have mentioned it and I would have done something about it and changed the situation which would have left me with well, I wouldn't have had this story to tell you but I'd like I'd like to have a nice ending to the story you know something not necessarily exciting but just something where I just say you know what it's all uploaded and I could, you can imagine me doing a little dance, just maybe with my fingers, a little finger dance. Look like a Charlie Chaplin-esque kind of finger movements. Like a puppet show, but without the puppets, just the fingers, just the hands moving. 
and no voices. That'd be quite a weird thing to look at, wouldn't it? Imagine a puppet show, but without a voice and without any puppets, just the hands sticking up out, you know, moving around. I don't think I'd pay for that. But then what do you do? Because the person who's doing that job is relying on the income. You know, it's a job that they're doing. Admittedly, it's, they're doing it in an unconventional way. They're not using puppets and they've not got no voices. So their puppet show is a very different kind of experience. Maybe esoteric. But they still need to be able to buy cornflakes and baked beans. And toilet paper. Hair gel, if they use hair gel, they might not. I don't know the person. I mean, I don't. I don't. Do, do people still wear hair gel? Is that a thing? Still, I don't know. I used to. I used to have such a full head of hair. Honestly, my hair was so full, and my fringe started about I think actually it was so low down so low down it's only when I started receding that you could finally get to see my eyebrows and my hair line was so far down now it's it's not you know it's I've receded and there's less at front than there was and it's kind of like baby babyish amount of hair it's like a it's like that one piece at the front is a little bit like a a newly born baby's scalp you know the hairs aren't really they're there, but they're not really there. They are there, but they're not. They're not communicating with each other. You know, they're not. They're not doing what I would expect a depleting population to be doing. Uh, they're not getting together, thinking, "What? Well, what, what can we do? We need to repopulate this little area." But they haven't. They're just sort of... It's like my scalp has just given up and all the other hairs are just moving away. I don't understand it. I used to know someone years ago and... My hair has turned into their hair. And they had like quite a... quite a receding hairline and a big forehead or well, it, it looked big probably because of the hair the hairline moving back and I, I seem to be moving towards that way because I think if you've got a full head of hair the scalp doesn't and the forehead even doesn't it's not quite as noticeable it's I suppose it's like your feet or if you've got really hairy toes it's not as noticeable to other people in the supermarket unless you're walking around without any shoes or socks 
and people will notice them. But if you've got socks on and shoes, no one really knows about it. That's my uh, marketing theory. You need to let people know. If you've got nice big hairy toes and you want people to know about them, don't keep your socks and shoes on because people will, they're not going to know. I'm not saying take your socks and shoes off, especially with, you know, snow, there's snow on the way today apparently and, you know, it might be snowy where you are. You need to keep your footwear on. This is not the day to show off your nicely I don't know, groomed toe hair. I mean, if you've got little bows and ribbons and stuff, I don't know. I don't know how seriously you take it. I mean, maybe you go to some kind of... I mean, some people take their dogs to shows, don't they, to show them off and win, win medals. Maybe there is such a show for toe hair. I don't know. Get to meet other people, other like-minded people with the same passion in life for toes and hair on the toes. I really don't know. I mean, it's there's all sorts of places you can go to to meet others. And I think that's what's one of the the amazing things about life is so many opportunities to find something that you love doing just through sheer enormity of the amount of different things that people do. There's going to be something out there that you just absolutely adore doing. And I think that's quite amazing. I was I was lucky that I found something that I was passionate about and you know, when I first started doing the hypnosis audios and videos online 13 years ago, my voice wasn't quite as croaky then, but it's, my voice might be croaky because I need a drink. I need a drink, yes. My voice always gets like this when I'm being extra boring. Wow, wow, wow. Wah, wah, wah. That's a sarcastic baby. Wah, wah. So, there's so many different things that you could choose to do or even try out, test. I mean, not everything is for everyone. For example, recently I bought a baby. I didn't buy a baby. I bought a chicken. <laughs> I bought a baby. I thought, I wonder what it's like to have a have a baby. But I didn't like it, so I gave it back. I kept the receipt. No, I, I bought a jigsaw puzzle. And um, I had this little romantic idea that I'd enjoy doing a jigsaw puzzle because I used to when I was a kid but I used to also enjoy trying to fit you know, miniature fire engines up my nose so there's a lot of things I used to do I used to eat worms you know I don't do a lot of those things 
that I used to do you know and jigsaw puzzles it turns out is one of those things that I don't have any interest in part of the reason I think was because the pictures and the pieces were so small and I just didn't enjoy it does that make sense I just didn't enjoy it didn't didn't see any point in it was boring And I wasn't doing it to be bored. I have no issue. I have no problems getting bored. I, you know, I get bored every time I make a recording like this. It's very boring to do it. It's supposed to be boring to listen to. And it's boring to actually do. To just sit here for an hour and talk about nothing (laughs) is very, very boring boring but I didn't get the jigsaw puzzle for boredom I got it because I thought it would be a bit nostalgic uh, relaxing calming in other words that mean exactly the same thing as relaxing and calming but instead I just It was, I suppose it's an analogy. It was a bit like walking around with sand in my shoes. And thinking to myself, I'm not enjoying this. Um, The sand in my shoes, it was an idea. You know, I put the sand in my shoes thinking that it might might be nostalgic, it might relax me, it might be a wonderful experience, but actually having walked around with that sand in my shoes for a few days, it's... Is not quite as as uh, wonderful as I once thought it might have been. So doing a jigsaw puzzle is very much like pouring sand in your shoes purposely and walking around feeling uncomfortable for a few days in the hope of some kind of relaxation and pleasure that's what a jigsaw puzzle is to me I actually filmed it if you're ever really bored I mean even more bored than this check out the video on YouTube just you might have to scroll down a bit but I think I did it it was this month I think beginning of January I'm pretty sure it might have been last month but I think it was this month and I did one of the jigsaw puzzles and I filmed myself doing it and I didn't even get to finish it I got so bored just at one point I wanted to just to chuck it on the floor have a little tantrum it was so tediously boring and that's coming from someone that my threshold for boredom is you know, I can, I can handle quite a bit of boredom. You know, in the past, I've had some of the most boring jobs ever. I've had jobs where I just wanted to climb under the table and go to sleep. 
and that was during the interview. So I, you know, I've had boring jobs. Um, most of them, in fact. But that jigsaw puzzle just took me in a different direction. It was just, yeah, it was too boring. I suppose if someone paid me to do it, it'd be a different thing. But I think being bored for an hour a day, you know, recording a boring recording like this, that's enough for me. I don't, I don't need a hobby that's even more boring. I did think about doing the word cross or the word search puzzles, you know the ones where it's in a book and all the words are written down at the bottom and you've got a big square with lots of letters and you have to find the words, basically search for the word. I used to love doing that when I was a kid. But I don't know if I would now. It's hard to know, but I don't know if I'm willing to take the gamble. I don't know. We'll see. It's not that important, really. But, which is why I'm telling you about it, because that's the whole point of these recordings, is to tell you stuff that's unimportant and uninteresting without purpose so I'm coming close to the end of this recording of Let Me Boy to Sleep number 86 I do believe It should be 86. I should remember it's 86 after spending the last hour talking about number 85 from yesterday. You know, it shouldn't be that difficult for me to recall such a piece of information as that. Therefore, I shall trust my memory. And therefore my conclusion that this must therefore be number 86. In that long list of wonderful, this wonderful <laughs> series of very boring talk. Can you believe I've actually spent roughly 86 hours talking at you about nothing so that you could get bored and fall asleep or at the very least it can be a distraction it can take you away from what you were thinking about a bit of light relief yeah maybe that's what I'll be remembered for light relief or the most boring man on the planet I think it, well, that was a bit of a high pitch 
noise, I think in some ways it's quite nice that I have embraced my boringness and used that superpower for good instead of going to parties and social gatherings and social events and ruining it for people by talking to them. So I'm using these these powers for good. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. See you next time.